My name is Angie Freeman. I am an IRS enroll agent. And today I'm here to talk about employee versus subcontractor classifications. So how do you know if you're trying to hire somebody, how should you classify them? You probably heard a lot of TikTok videos about how everybody should be a subcontractor. I mean, all that's possible, but um, let me tell you a little bit about what they are and what the government agencies will look for in case of an audit so that you know what you should do to protect yourself. All right, so the main issue when deciding when you're hiring somebody and whether they should be an employee or an independent contractor is control. So that's the main point is control. And it comes down to a number of factors that determine who has control over what that person does. Um, how are they hired or retained? Do they have a contract or did they go through more of an interview process, right? How are they paid? Are they paid a salary, an hourly rate perhaps, or are they paid just a fee? Um, can you fire them? That's, that's definitely an employee, they can be fired, right? So what about who has control over how the work is actually done, right? So um, do you tell them how to do it? Or are they pretty much an expert and they take no guidance from you? Do they own their own business? Do they work uh, on their own terms? Do they tell you how the work will be done or do you dictate it to them again? Do they advertise their work? Do they perform the same work for others? Are they insured? And do they have their own workers' comp, workers' compensation? So these are all factors that will help determine who has control. And then there's also a financial aspect of control. So um, do, did you pay for their tools? To use on the job what if they're office worker for example did you pay for their computer or did they already have their own tools and you have no input into what it is they're buying and what they're using to get the job done did you dictate when they're paid so you, did you tell them i'll pay you bi-weekly or do you have to pay them when they bill you whenever that is and they tell you how often you'll pay them do you reimburse them for their expenses if you reimburse them, that's most more likely of an employee relationship. An independent contractor runs their own business, charges others for the same work, doesn't ask you how things are to be done, and um, they typically will not ask you to reimburse you for their expenses. They'll just include it in the bill that they present to you. So when they bill you for the work, that typically includes reimbursable expenses, not paid separately. So that's control, and that's a really major, major point that you need to think about when you're hiring somebody. Usually it's pretty clear whether somebody you're about to hire is an independent contractor or an employee. And another really, really important topic here is line of work. So the person that you're hiring, are they doing something that's in line or similar to what you're doing? So for example, I'm an accountant. If I was to hire a bookkeeper or a tax preparer to work at my firm and they're doing essentially the same work I'm doing, I'll probably buy a computer for them, have a desk and um, tell them how I want my work product to be in the end, how to do it, they're an employee. Now, what if in my office a roof leaked and a plumber came in, they're in a different line of work they are much more likely to be an independent contractor fixing my roof or fixing a bathroom leak um, than you know, an accountant working in an accounting practice. So line of work is a key aspect and that's something that's being looked at very closely by a variety of government agencies that are auditing this relationship and the audits are on the rise. They have been on the rise for at least a decade, but they're as the states and the um, state agencies and uh, federal agencies are looking for ways to increase the funding in their budget, that's something that, that is kind of an easy thing to pick because it, that classification or misclassification is just being abused so broadly that it's very easy for them to go after somebody. All right. So um, another thing you should look for is if they're an independent contractor, do you have a contract for them? Do they send you a contract to sign? If they're a contractor, they should be the one providing you with a contract, right? 
that they that they're basically providing to all of their other clients. So you have that in place. All right. And um, what about things like benefits, insurance, pension plan, vacation? Do you pay for any of those items? If you answer yes to any of those, they're most likely your employee, right? And I just wanted to add a word of warning. So agencies like Workers' Compensation Board, Unemployment Insurance, um, State Tax Authorities are all in line along with the IRS in the employment audit. So if any one of those agencies pulled you in and determined that you misclassified your employees as um, subcontractors, What's going to happen is they look back the past several years, typically three years, but they can go longer, and they will communicate with all the other agencies. So you're not going to just have an audit from the workers' comp board or just an audit from the unemployment insurance. It's going to be an audit from them, followed by audits from all the other agencies. And we've seen this happen. Um, and we've seen companies go out of business because of these um, misclassification audits. Um, so, um, just one thing again to keep in mind is, let's say you have an independent contractor, I'll put it in quotes, and when um, their contract ended, they filed for unemployment. That happens quite often. Um, once they file for unemployment and the agency determines that this person was actually getting a 1099 from you, um, they will audit you that there's a very high chance of that happening. So whether it's an, um, you know, they filed for unemployment or God forbid they got hurt in the job and they filed for workers come. Um, and again, they didn't carry their own workers come. You, um, they, you probably didn't carry it either, but once they go and they file for workers come and they say I worked for so-and-so, um, you're very likely to get, um, a letter in the mail followed by um, whatever it is that comes with um, addressing the audit, whether it's in person or by mail, um, the, the result is the same. Um, you're more likely to get pulled into that audit followed by audit by all the agencies that communicate. And we do see certain states, such as California, Washington State, New York State, these are kind of at the forefront so they're the first ones to be very aggressive for this. California was the first one several years back where they basically said, if that person is in the same line of work as you are, automatically they're an employee. There's no if said or buts. We will disallow independent contractor status or subcontractor status for anybody that's in the same line of work. So California was the first. New York is very close to follow and Washington is also pretty strict. But other states are taking note and also thinking about how that's an extra source of revenue. So regardless of which state you're in, that's something you should consider heavily and um, really think twice before classifying somebody as a subcontractor. Make, make sure that they really follow with all those guidelines that I just presented. And um, hopefully that should keep, keep you out of trouble. Well, hope you found this useful. If you like this, please subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next installment.